talking to it. Um, um, so here is a schedule for today. Uh, today we'll finish the proof of um, like how momentum converges and how we achieve um, this acceleration uh, rate of convergence. Um, and then if we have time, we'll talk about a little bit about homework and uh, reading assignment of um, this overview of gradient descent algorithm uh, by this uh, Ruder guy. And uh, um, so let's recap of uh, first, let's recap what uh, we had done for, um, for this gradient descent with momentum. Um, so we repeat this idea again. The idea is pretty simple. The idea is um, if our gradient descent algorithm uh, moves in the same direction in two consecutive steps, then we just push it a little bit further toward that direction. If the gradient descent algorithm changes directions in two consecutive uh, iterations, then we use previous iterations direction to correct the current uh, steps iteration. So this is the idea of uh, acceleration. Uh, the execution is pretty simple. Um, so as we can see, uh, this is a gradient descent term and this is a momentum term. And we apply this uh, algorithm to a simple linear regression problem. And uh, uh, we did a few analysis. And this star, this equation star, so the analysis is down it is for this term, like uh, for uh, the k plus one iteration subtract the best weight possible, and uh, uh, k iteration subtract this. Um, and this is this is the estimate we would like to uh, obtain. That is, so the joint L two norm. So it's like uh, taking the L two norm of this guy, and taking the L two norm of this guy. Then we add them up with square. Then we take square root. So it's pretty much like a, a joint L2 norm. And then um, we would like to get something like this as, as we can see. So this guy, so this is a K plus one iteration uh, subtract the best possible is less than. So it's not this guy less than this one. It's like uh, um, when we perform, where was the, where was the image? Okay, here we go. When we perform this kind of uh, uh, update, it's like a cascading, it, it's a cascading update. So which means the next update has some overlap with previous update. So what we wanna do is we have this uh, joint convergence. So if we have this convergence, eventually it's convergent as well. And then we rewrite. Okay, so then we just replace the formula and uh, we make use of uh, this one is zero. So we can insert the W star here. Um, and then we make uh, some further uh, this split. So for example, for this term, uh, we insert W star. So, uh, and then I think, so this one is combined. And then this W star is, uh, is we insert. So it's like we subtract and add at the same time. It doesn't change uh, our formula overall. Um, and then we reach this part. So, so finally, this is our uh, matrix form error equation. So this is the error equation for momentum. Uh, so I would like to add, this is a matrix form. However, uh, this matrix is difficult to analyze as this is our Q. Uh, the Q is our Hessian for this problem. And in this linear regression problem, so we have derived that, where was it? Okay, so right here. So the Hessian, let me just add here. The Hessian Q is A transpose uh, A, which is a positive matrix if we assume A is of a full column rank. So we've learned that A is uh, um, 
A is this long, this kind of a tall matrix uh, that uh, um, it represents our data matrix. So uh, the ith row is like ith data and the jth column is our jth feature, okay? So now, and now uh, we wanna basically we denote, so now we denote this matrix as G. So this big matrix has as G and we perform a matrix decomposition on this matrix. And we make use of the Q, which is our Hessian. This is a positive matrix. Uh, and we perform our eigenvalue decomposition. So uh, this Lambda is a diagonal matrix which has uh, all the eigenvalues, all the positive eigenvalues uh, of our G matrix, all right? So right here. And the V is an orthonormal matrix. It's pretty much like our linear algebra. We learn to uh, diagonalize a matrix and then we perform Gram-Schmidt uh, on, uh, on the matrix formed by eigenvectors, okay? So, um, And then we perform, so after we perform this matrix um, diagonalization, we can decompose this G into, uh, into this uh, big matrix. Um, and now inside, like in here, this is a block diagonal uh, matrix. So it has uh, four blocks. So right here, so this block, this block, this block, this block. So this block is zero and all three other blocks are um, diagonal. So if we have, uh, if we have this structure, we can use permutation to permute this matrix to a full diagonal block. So this is like a, a permutated version of this matrix. So you become like a, a small blocks and each block has exactly like what happens here. So it's three entries. So it's, we just permute, so it's like uh, we permute this to here and we permute uh, this to here and we do it for the rest of all the entries. And pi is a permutation matrix so that when we permute the matrix and then we permute it back. So the transpose, it means we reverse the permute. It's identity matrix. And now um, this, this becomes, so, uh, so this G tilde, it becomes um, really like a block diagonal matrix. Unlike we have three block here, it has M block here and each block has this form. And then we have, um, if we take the characteristic polynomial of this G, G was the original matrix. G was this matrix, all right? And these two are like block diagonal orthonormal matrices. So they are kind of ignorable uh, in our eigenvalue computation. And then if we compute the characteristic polynomial of G, for example, if we use Z to denote the eigenvalues of G to be computed, then the determinant of this one is the same thing as this one. So uh, adding this permutation matrix, uh, so uh, for example, so I wanna say that, whoops. So I want to say that the determinant of, okay, so let me just still use this one. So this is a matrix and then we permute this matrix uh, and then permute it back. It, it doesn't change its eigenvalue. And then if we multiply, so, so because, and then let's add and determinant of pi equals determinant of pi transpose is one. I mean, this is uh, this is straightforward uh, to show because permutation matrix is is essentially an identity matrix. We just permute its entry, so uh, and its determinant is the same as an identity matrix. Uh, that's why when we have this, we just apply the determinant formula, uh, and the determinant is one. And now this uh, G. Uh, so this G um, tilde 
is a block diagonal matrix like this. And the ZI, ZI, so needless to see, needless, needless to say, uh, ZI is just a diagonal matrix, okay? So what happens is this ZI subtract the G1, it, it, it will be all these small uh, like diagonal blocks. So uh, this one, the determinant is a multiplication of all these uh, determinant of uh, diagonal blocks. So what happens is uh, we have eigenvalue is just a collection of eigenvalue of each GI. And our goal now keep, so despite we have traversed uh, so like lengthy uh, computation, uh, let's remind us our goal is to, to achieve this. And what, what is this row? So the row in star, okay. is the uh, spectral radius of G, our, our matrix. So our matrix in the error equation. So this is our error equation. If we take norm and then we apply cauchy schwarz inequality. So it's essentially this matrix L2 norm, okay? And we've shown in 449 that the matrix is L2 norm is its spectral radius, AKA eigenvalue with the biggest magnitude. All right. In uh, in four four nine, every matrix we've uh, um, we've computed, um, they have a real eigenvalue. So essentially, we're doing you know like uh, essentially the spectral radius is maximum uh, positive eigenvalue. However, in our case here, we'll first see a complex eigenvalue. So let's uh, let's try to solve it. All right. So we basically. Um, so rho is the spectral radius of G. And what we wanna do is we wanna minimize, we wanna minimize rho, okay. So we wanna make rho as small as possible, as close to zero as possible so that uh, we have fast convergence. And now we know that rho is the spectral radius of G. Essentially it's a uh, eigenvalue with maximum uh, magnitude. So what I want to do, and then we know that eigenvalue of G is a collection of eigenvalue of each of these small matrices. And now we just, you know, solve for the eigenvalue for the GIs. So now let's do it. And for each, so for each GI. the eigenvalues zi subtract gi the characteristic polynomial is uh, nothing but uh, we have this uh, z square um let me see subtract one plus beta uh minus alpha lambda i z and then uh, plus beta So it's a subtract a minus beta, so it's a plus beta, all right? And now we basically, we apply. So we set it to be zero, okay? So we apply our quadratic formula, I mean, our old friend. So one half, then it's a minus uh, this term, so which is gonna be plus. plus or minus square root 
of one plus beta minus alpha lambda i square subtract four beta. Okay. Now, if we investigate this term, okay. So the, this is the eigenvalue, I, I, uh, the eigenvalue of GI. What I want to do is, uh, so let me just remind us what is our goal in case we lost in uh, computation. So our goal is to choose the momentum constant beta, the step size alpha, such that uh, Z's magnitude magnitude is as close to zero as possible, all right? So this is our goal. And now let's just uh, uh, like proceed to try to achieve this goal. I mean, if this is real, it's pretty simple. Uh, it, if this guy is greater than four beta, uh, then it's pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, the, we just choose the bigger one, right? So we just choose the plus one. So uh, this one, then we just take derivative with respect to alpha and uh, beta. Then we formulate the equation, we solve it. However, if we look at this expression, we find something uh, very interesting. Um, First of all, let's look at the discriminant. One plus beta subtract alpha uh, square. Beta, okay. Beta is something between zero and one, right? Beta is our momentum constant. Like I said earlier, by default, uh, sometimes we choose it as 0 0.9, sometimes we choose it as uh, 0 0.99, but it's less than one, okay? So this means one plus beta is less than two, all right? So alpha, despite alpha being um, close to zero, so alpha, despite alpha is, uh, is much less than one, but uh, alpha is greater than zero, and lambda i, so lambda i is the eigenvalue of our Hessian matrix. And our, our Hessian matrix is uh, uh, the ith eigenvalue of Hessian matrix. And our Hessian matrix is a positive matrix. So this is greater than zero. And let's look at, so, and that means so that means this term is like positive, right? Okay. So one plus beta, um, one plus beta, whoops. Subtract alpha lambda i. So this guy is like a, a, is sure less than um, I think it's two. So if we think about it, this term is less than two. Um, so, and again, we have another, this multiplication, okay. So we'll see that, we'll see that actually, so let me just directly write down here. Uh, we'll see that this term is actually less than zero 
for uh, for beta chosen close to one, but less than one, okay? And alpha uh, close to zero. We'll actually, we'll have two complex roots. We have two complex roots uh, for this uh, Z. So we have, uh, so Z1, Z2 from, Z1, Z2 uh, will be complex. And what's interesting is because it's complex, it's quadratic equation, but we have real coefficients. So they are really Z1 is Z2's complex conjugate, okay. And if we have two complex conjugate, uh, computing the magnitude is pretty simple. Um, so for complex number, so which means Z1, Z, Z1 and Z2, because they form complex conjugate, so they have the same magnitude and their magnitude is, so think about this is nothing but like A plus or minus IB, okay, so their uh, magnitude square is nothing but, uh, so this implies Z square and uh, Z, uh, Z2, Z1 square and Z2 square, it's nothing but uh, a quarter and uh, our, the real part plus uh, the imaginary part is uh, is square root of, uh, we revert this. So this is a negative number, right? So this is pretty much like, so this is like a, a u plus or minus minus v, okay? And we rewrite it as a u plus or minus i square root of v. So then we take, uh, square, so we'll get this is four beta subtract one plus beta subtract alpha lambda i square, okay. So eventually this is our, this is our um, minimization problem. Like uh, we convert a huge minimization problem to a minimization problem uh, that is uh, so, uh, that is like a, a minimization problem for a quadratic equations uh, uh, roots magnitude. And now um, we have our assumption now. So um, we have our assumption that is for lambda i, okay. Lambda i's are eigenvalues of q. So eigenvalues of q, which is a transpose a. And we just assume like uh, they, um, so we just assume that uh, they, so we assume um, lambda i is between lambda max of q and lambda min of q. And lambda min of Q is greater than zero. So this one is greater than zero. And we basically want to minimize this term. Um, so um, like we minimize it and let's try, all right. So if we look at, if we look at uh, this, uh, um, this function, This is beta alpha, beta uh, alpha. So, um, so we ignore the beta alpha a little bit. We think about uh, this function as a function of uh, 
of lambda i, okay? So we treat um, should I use this representation, this uh, presentation? Um, I think we may we we may use a, a simpler um, this presentation, so we don't have to take derivative. But if we take derivative, what we will get is uh, um, so what we will we'll get we take derivative we'll get. Uh, um, so four and this guy. So we will have uh, uh, let me think. Yeah, let's let's use this equation. So let's still use this equation. So the starting point is this equation. Okay, and this actually implies, this actually implies um, one plus beta subtract um, alpha lambda i square is less than four beta. And we can uh, change this square to absolute value. Okay. And then this is equivalent of one plus beta subtract alpha lambda i less than two square root of beta, uh, less than minus two square root of beta. And this is equivalent of, uh, okay. So uh, this presentation is simpler because we, we want to treat our bound as a function of lambda, not alpha and beta. So. It's like we let lambda vary in, uh, in this range and we find its minimum. So, okay. And again, lambda i, lambda i changes. So lambda i varies from lambda min of q to lambda max of Q. And this is a linear function. This is a linear function in lambda, which means um, the maximum and minimum uh, takes at uh, uh, like uh, the boundary. So, and because this is a minus term, so its minimum value should be achieved. So this implies uh, the max and min is taken at the boundary. So the minimum is achieved at when, because this is minus, is achieved at this. So we just let minus one equals lambda max of Q. And then um, one equals one plus beta uh, minus alpha lambda min of Q. And here is we solve for uh, alpha and uh, beta. Okay. So now let's solve for alpha and beta. Um, for example, what we can do is, uh, I mean, this equation, we have plenty of way to solve it. Um, for example, we multiply square root, I'm sorry, square root of beta times two to the left and then we subtract, um, is that good? So we, we may first cancel alpha. I think we may first cancel alpha. So uh, for example, 
So we have this minus two square root of beta uh, equals one plus beta subtract alpha lambda max of Q. And this is two square root of beta uh, plus one plus beta minus alpha lambda max of Q. And then we basically, we just, uh, so we name this equation one, equation two. And if we solve it, we can do equation one times, uh, sorry, this is lambda min. So equation one times uh, lambda max of Q divides lambda min of Q, and then we subtract equation two. Okay, so, and then this term will get canceled and we'll get a equation solely in beta. So we have minus two lambda max of Q and lambda min of Q uh, square root of beta plus lambda min divided by lambda max of Q of Q uh, one plus beta and uh, um, equals, so this is equal and then subtract. So it becomes four here and then uh, wait, no, sorry. So it's still two and then subtract two square root of beta. So this is the left side. And for the right side, we'll have this is minus one minus lambda. Okay. All right, so now if we solve this, so I'll skip the solution procedure. Uh, yeah, let's still solve it, okay. For example, the left is gonna be uh, minus two, uh, which is this guy subtract one. So we will have, this is uh, lambda max of Q, lambda min of Q subtract, uh, which is plus lambda max of Q, okay. So we can pull out the uh, minus two here. So essentially it's this guy plus one and we use common denominator and we use square root beta and same thing happens here. So uh, we have lambda max of Q, lambda min of Q plus, yeah, I'm getting, so why we can cancel this? minus <clears throat> so this is lambda max um minus two so cancels with that why we can get cancellation? This is weird. All right, um, I will try to fix the computation, uh, but uh, so, but let me just copy down the answer from my notes, but I, I'll fix the computation later. So uh, let me just uh, say the conclusion. The conclusion is um, we'll get square root of uh, beta is um, the square root, okay. The square root of lambda uh, max of Q subtract the square root of lambda min of Q divided by the square root of lambda max of Q plus square root of lambda min of Q, okay? So essentially this is condition number square root minus one condition number uh, square root plus one. 
And finally, finally, so if we get a square root of beta, what does that mean? Um, now, if we look back, so uh, even though I I I kind of um, I kind of sure that maybe all of us are lost in uh, computation, but if we look back at uh, this gi, okay, so which is right here, uh, where was it? Right here. Okay, so let me just copy down this. All our effort here is to look for the eigenvalue for GI and then we minimize it. However, so square root of beta, um, and if we look at the determinant of GI, it's beta, right? Zero, subtract minus beta. The determinant of a matrix, of a two by two matrix is also, um, the magnitude of its two eigenvalue multiplied together. I mean, given given it's a positive, but beta is positive, so it's fine. Also, Z1, Z2 have the same magnitude because they are complex. So, okay. So it basically means that uh, our eigenvalues, um, so our eigenvalues uh, for each of these block matrix are just beta, right? And uh, we just minimize the beta, which is this guy. And this overall brings back to, uh, so it brings back to the origin that is, um, this implies uh, our rate of convergence. So. So eigenvalues, so let me add one sentence, i.e. Uh, the eigenvalues magnitudes uh, product is beta. So each one of them is square root of beta, which is the eigenvalue or say the spectral radius of GI. So then the spectral radius, okay. Of G is just max of eigenvalues magnitudes of gi, i from one to n. So as we can see here, it's just the maximum possible value for square root of beta, which is this guy. Okay. So now we have finally reached uh, our rate of convergence for momentum. So let me just copy down uh, this error equation right here. So this is our G matrix, all right? So now if we apply cauchy schwarz inequality, we'll have this is, uh, so let me just copy.
And this is our rate of convergence. Like I said, when the condition number is like, for example, um, when the condition number is, uh, um, I would say, for example, zero point, uh, for example, when um, when the condition number is like zero point one, for example, uh, the uh, the maximum eigenvalue is ten times um, the, sorry, when the uh, when the maximum eigenvalue is a hundred times. Uh, the smallest one, then we achieve 10 times uh, faster convergence. So uh, it's how fast, uh, how fast we get. So that pretty much wraps up the, the, um, the, um, like, uh, the proof. And now let, let's talk about the homework. Okay. So for the homework, there are reading of, uh, it's like a reading assignment. Um, this is, this, this um, momentum we've learned is called actually where was it? So right here. Um, so actually, uh, this this is called like like we said earlier. This is called Polyak. Okay. Momentum. So there's another momentum called Nesterov momentum. So let's uh, let's do it here. So this is a reading material. Um, this is reading material um, I posted in the uh, Canvas space a long time ago. Um, I think this is a very nice written overview. Uh, it's like a gateway for us if we want to start reading, for example, uh, academic papers, and if we want to uh, pursue a grad school career. Um, we better start read some, you know, like a, a good introductory paper uh, for research. And this is a good start. So it says it's an overview of a gradient descent algorithm. Uh, it's by this Ruder guy. And uh, um, for example, so the theta, theta is essentially our W. It's like our parameters. Um, and, and the eta is basically our alpha and the mu. So we'll see later it's uh, the momentum constant. Um, so essentially we have two sets of this uh, commonly used notations. Um, so you see some people like to use W alpha and beta and other people see theta, eta and mu. So, but there's the same thing, all right. So for example, uh, this is our stochastic gradient descent. The theta is a uh, uh, coefficient and these are the samples. Um, and then we reached our, where was it, momentum. So for example, this is a rewriting of momentum. Okay, so this is a rewriting of momentum. Um, so this is essentially our, so if we reread it, so this is like, if we rewrite our, uh, in our notation, this is gonna be, okay. So we can, we can feel free to shift the index, but uh, it's essentially a rewriting of our uh, polyac uh, momentum. Okay. So as uh, it says here, the momentum term is usually set to 0 0.9 or similar value, but, uh, oh, it uses gamma, sorry. So I thought it uses mu. Um, okay, so here is our natural momentum, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, in our homework. So the homework is we want to derive an equivalent form of the Nesterov momentum. Is the reason is because um, the PyTorch claim. So for example, let me switch to here. So this is uh, the the PyTorch's SGD uh, implementation. So it, it's taken from, for example, it's take this is a official PyTorch this repository. Okay. So for example. If we look at the formula right here, okay, um, it's not exactly what natural momentum is. 
So then we read through the implementation and we find uh, that this is not really an implementation. It's just a wrapper function of this function. Okay. So we'll find uh, if we start reading packages, which if we pursue a, a grass study uh, involving coding, so we'll, uh, we'll read other people's package and essentially uh, Torch is a very nicely written package and we'll find there are lots of wrapper function and this is one of them. So for example, in this package, it's, it's like a wrapper and what's really happening is, is this SGD function in the functional. So let's click it, okay. And then we, uh, uh, we, we reached here. So this is the SGD function and it has several uh, parameters. For example, weight decay, momentum, dampening, nest trough, and uh, we'll see that, for example, the flow to flow to flow the bool and the other default um, this type of it. So now this is uh, this is a screenshot where I took from that. But um, so on Friday we will we'll, uh, go through this in detail. But uh, overall, it's not exactly like this. So instead of this. Like a uh, uh, PyTorch's version is really like uh, it's really like theta here instead of uh, theta minus gamma uh, bt minus one. And in the homework, essentially, we want us to derive uh, what is exactly happening here, um, and uh, so the hint. Okay, so the hint, so for the homework. So for the homework hint, uh, I would like to give, which uh, we'll uh, learn more in, in uh, Friday's class. So uh, as we're one lecture behind, so I'll extend the homework to uh, next Tuesday. Uh, so we have some more time to uh, digest uh, what's happening. The key is to make a substitution. So for example, um, in the homework, so I think in the homework, I still use W notation. So in the homework, there's a term of WK plus mu is VK. Okay, so there's the term, this first term is VK plus one equals mu VK minus alpha. So I think I, I use beta as well. Okay, alpha is a step size and beta uh, is our momentum constant. Um, so what's happening is we actually, this, this is not preferable when we code it because we have to update what's inside then take derivative. This is pretty much like not implemented in every machine learning interface is we have to in update within our autograd iteration. So the simplest thing is we let, we make a substitution, we let, this to be xk, and that's it. And we try to derive an equivalent form. So on Friday, we'll talk more about it. And uh, so that's it for today, okay.